now I'd like to learn more about you as a person. So, what kind of adjustment did you have to make after you moved to Hong Kong, personally speaking? Well, a big one is I'm 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 working as hard as I can to learn Cantonese. Um, I I was very lucky as a as a foreign service officer uh, in, of Canada. I've, I've had three postings in Beijing. I lived in Beijing for 11 years, and I was very lucky to have two years of full-time Mandarin language training before my first posting in Beijing in the early 90s. Um, so, so I have a pretty good base in Mandarin, um, but Cantonese, of course, is a different language, and uh, and it's definitely challenging uh, to learn. Um, so. Uh, so that's something that I'm working at, but I'm optimistic. I feel like I'm starting to make some progress. Um, so where are you in terms of Cantonese? <laughs> like your level of Cantonese? Oh, I mean, it, it, it's still pretty basic, but uh, you know, for for say uh, non-Chinese people who have already learned Mandarin, um, you you're in a kind of a, a special a special place um, between Mandarin and Cantonese because you know a lot of the vocabulary. Is uh, is similar or the same, just pronounced differently. So as I'm, so in terms of the grammar and the structure and so on, um, uh, I, you know, I that's pretty familiar to me. Of course, you know, there are some significant parts of Cantonese that are that are quite distinct from Mandarin. But I'm, I, where I make progress, it's more uh, things that I know how to say in Mandarin um, that that. Can translate directly into Cantonese. Then I'm learning um, how to kind of make the transition from the Mandarin sounding to the Cantonese sounding, and starting to put together, you know, phrases. So when I when I go and give a, a speech or I introduce myself, you know, I uh, I try to to work in um, some phrases in in Cantonese, and I'm hoping. I'll do more and more of that as as time goes by. So it was a courtesy to speak Cantonese. Oh yeah, I mean, I and and I have to say, I even with a little bit and even doing it not very well, you just get such tremendous feedback from people. People really appreciate it. I mean, I think this is true many places in the world that you go. Just making the effort to speak somebody else's language, they really appreciate it. So that that also gives you a good incentive to keep working at it because you get such tremendous positive reinforcement. Uh, people do. People do appreciate it. I think it's important in, if you're working in Hong Kong um, to make the effort to to learn Cantonese. It is it is the, the you know the, the language of the, the majority of the population, um, and it, and it's a wonderful rich language. So I'm also for me it's also a personal interest um, to um, to understand it better and to get better at speaking it. You worked and lived in Beijing before. So, what what are some of the noticeable differences between working in these two different cities? And which one would you pick as your favorite city to live in? Well, that's not really a, a fair question. It's like asking someone, you know, who's your who's your favorite, favorite, favorite child, your favorite sibling, or your favorite parent, or your favorite child. Um, so, uh, I like both of them. I, we lived in Hong Kong uh, previously as a as a young family. So I was here for a year with my wife, and we had one of our two sons um, was a baby when we came in 1990. We lived here for a year and then moved to Beijing. Another son was born while we were on that posting in Beijing, but he was actually born in Hong Kong. So, so we started in Hong Kong, and then we moved to Beijing, and then and then we were back and forth between Beijing and Ottawa over the course of about 25 years, about half of that in Beijing and half in Ottawa. So, um, uh, I I was very much looking for an opportunity to come back to Hong Kong. I've always enjoyed Hong Kong. Um, I like you know there's so much about Hong Kong that I love. Uh, the the people are fantastic. The natural. Setting is fantastic, and I would say, you know, it has a much, uh, a much more spectacular natural setting than than Beijing. Um, uh, the air quality nowadays is uh, is somewhat better in Hong Kong than it is in Beijing. Not there's no smog. Uh, there's smog in Hong Kong, definitely, but um, but not as much as in Beijing. Uh, and you're by the ocean, and and I think one of the great things about about uh, the geography of Hong Kong. Is that no place in Hong Kong is very far from from a mountain or forest or the ocean, um, and.
and that's a that's a real plus. So, you know, there are things things I, I love about Hong Kong, Beijing. Um, uh, though I I I enjoyed living in Beijing. I would happily live in in Beijing again, in spite of the smog. Uh, it has tremendous uh, heritage, the culture of the place. Um, the um, uh, there's also interesting natural scenery around Beijing, the hills, the you know the the the, uh, the Great Wall. Um, there's lots of nice places to go go for hikes or ride a bike if you can get out of the city. Um, and uh, and it's a very dynamic place culturally. You know the art scene in Beijing, the music scene. Uh, the technology development, the universities—it's a—it's a, you know—it's a world capital. But I, you know, I would say both of them are world cities, um, and they, they, they are different in terms of the work. Uh, the job is 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 uh, I would say quite different in Hong Kong. As I mentioned, we have this huge Canadian community in Hong Kong, which which we don't have in in Beijing. I mean, we have a Canadian community, but. But um, it, it would be a few thousand people. It's not 300,000. So that makes a big difference to the nature of the work that we do. And of course, as a business environment, uh, Hong Kong has a you know, well-established rule of law and you know, protections for, internet, for intellectual property, a very free media, um, open access to the internet. You know, it's, it, there's a difference these days. If you're in, in Beijing, there's parts, things on the internet, parts of the internet that you can't access. Um, when you're there in Hong Kong, you know it's it's wide open. So, so, um, so, it's a very different kind of environment in which to operate.